Dr. Simpkins is, uh, is a national treasure, first and foremost. I grew up in Mansfield, went to school there. It was a segregated school. Well, my father told me to be anything he wanted to be. He said, I'm with you. You'd be a bootlegger, make the best whiskey, preacher, preacher, best sermon, be a dentist, be the best dentist. I chose dentistry. The question of what Dr. Simpkins has meant to this community is, is a, a lot more complex than you might think because there is an enormous amount of good that is not attributed directly to him, but it would not exist without him. He can walk into any room and not know any of the people there. But he walks in and he goes, hi, how are you? And he comes from here. He was a very close friend and ally of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was the reason that Dr. King came to Shreveport on two occasions. I was in Chicago. I met Martin Luther King at a church meeting. They invited King to come here to speak at Galilee, to spread the word, to spread the good news. Dr. Simpkins and, and Dr. King were really like two peas in a pod. Oh, we were good friends. We did a lot of good things together. Dr. Simpkins was right in the middle of voter registration, making sure that people that wanted to vote could vote. So that's what I did. I got busy with voter registration. But then that thing turned around. They began turning people down. Blacks were subject to Jim Crow laws, and Jim Crow laws were designed to exclude a certain segment, depending on where you were, from voting. And they were ingenious things. Some of them uh, today almost appear as a joke, but they were anything but. Asking crazy questions about how far is up, how many bubbles in a bar of soap, a lot of crazy stuff, and then turning you down. So the Jim Crow laws used a lot of different ways to keep you out, and Dr. Simpkins is one of the folks who came forward and said, yes, this is wrong. But it took a toll on me. I was uh, living like this. I was a, a bump blown up. We had dead cats on the lawn. One was broken. The cross is burned. They sent the undertaker to pick me up, said I was dead. All kind of things. My children heard this thing, too. He and his wife and kids were threatened. It was a bad time. The two important things we needed to know, love and forgiveness. And true forgiveness means it never happened. Love means that you love everybody, even in spite of themselves. If you don't have the right to vote, your voice doesn't matter. You might as well never have been born. In many cases, he has been the voice of reason. When I ran for office, we, we desegregated the ballpark. We told black people to stop going. They cut the profit down. We fought everything where it was unjust. He has remained an icon, not just to civil rights, but he's an icon for the community. When we were in the legislature, and I would say to him, well, you can't really say that because if you do, they're not going to want you here anymore. And he said, I'm not answering to them. I'm answering to the people that put me here. It's more than worth it. I didn't expect the change to be this gratifying. It's the greatest thing that happened in my life. Shreveport would not be Shreveport as we know it today, specifically without him. He is kind beyond fault. He is highly intelligent. He is articulate. Caring, a great listener, and always having a smile. I don't know which of those is my favorite trait about him because they all make up the man that we know as C.O. Simpkins.